four minutes left until I go live. Type in all of your Amazon questions so that we can answer them here on the live. I'm starting off today already with my mic muted. How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to the My Amazon Guy live Q&A. My name is Noah Wickham. I'm a brand director here at My Amazon Guy. We are a full-service Amazon marketing agency here in the space, and I am here today to answer any and all questions that you have for me. So without further ado, let's get started here today. Hoping everybody is doing very well. Uh, and we have first up, Journeyman. Happy Friday. Hello, Noah. My trademark was rejected by USPTO. What are the steps I need to take to ensure I keep more my organic ranks and reviews when I change to a new name? 
So journeyman, if you are looking to have the same exact product, two different options you can look at here. One, uh, if you are just changing a brand name uh, product to a new one, you will have no issues whatsoever uh, just having that updated and keeping all of your reviews and rankings. If you are creating a brand new ASIN with a new brand name, what you can do is you can actually create that and then create a merged listing. So you'll take both of those ASINs, merge them together to have the new brand name. And that will keep the ranking and the reviews of the prior one as well. So that would be my advice is take one of those two options, but the easier one is probably going to be a brand name change as a whole. Uh, when you get rejected by USPTO, always make sure before you put in any form of trademark to check the trademark website to make sure it is not already a valid one or, or that it meets all of the requirements. We also offer trademark services here at my Amazon guy if you want to check out our site and order through us. Next up, we have Abdullah Khan. I am Amazon PPC expert, so I'm interested in Google ad skills. What is your opinion? Google ads are great. I think if you're looking at doing Google ads, it can never help to learn more. My capacity limit was in uh, limit increase was granted for May, but I am still unable to send to Amazon. My ocean freight will take 40 to 45 days. Why won't Amazon let me send yet? Uh, so my goods will arrive in time for May. Uh, so when Amazon is calculating your storage volume, they are calculating it based on current shipments in. So that means that anytime you are looking to send new product in, you have to have the storage volume already accessible to you. As soon as you create that shipment and you confirm it, Amazon considers that to be a part of your storage limits. So therefore, you want to make sure that you have your storage limits set up ahead of time. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm considering expanding TikTok shop. Do you have any tips for fulfilling TikTok orders using Amazon inventory? Yeah, uh, super simple. So what you're going to do, and I'll share my screen here real quick, uh, is actually just do it through remote fulfillment. So uh, you can do MCF orders. So let's present. Give me one second. Here we go. So I'm on the Age of Sage account here. So uh, you'll come over here go to your orders and you'll create MCF order. So you can uh, fulfill anything from any marketplace using this. You'll put all of your customer address information, in, all of your items, uh, how you want to be shipped. I believe TikTok has very rigorous uh, shipping standards. So you may want to stick with expedited depending on when the arrives by is. So that would be my advice to you. Uh, outside of that, we also offer a service here uh, my Amazon guy for expanding to TikTok shop. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to reach out to our sales regarding that. Okay. And let's see here. Got a lot of these already this morning, guys. Uh, James. James is a listing merge to get more vine reviews for a new variation, a safe process What is the basic process. Can't find much info. Yes. Uh, James is an extremely safe process. Vine uh, reviews and merges are one of those things that I would always recommend if you're looking to get more reviews. You absolutely can push any products and merge them together as long as it is the same product. The only place you will run into issues is merging products that do not work together. So therefore, yes, I would absolutely encourage it if you are looking for it. Uh, it is a safe process at the end of the day. And you can always, uh, you know, keep the two separate products as well. Again, from James as well, we have, does Amazon punish my other listings when I have issues with new listings, mistakenly flagged as restic restricted sales on other listings dropped off a cliff? So yes and no. Um, typically speaking, Amazon will only do something like this if you are dealing with a child variation. Uh, that's going to be your primary issue here. Uh, if you are not, then from there, uh, what I would suggest highly from you uh, is that you start to look through uh, and verify that you don't have any notifications you missed. Uh, on top of that as well, you want to look at your actual products and see, are they uh, search suppressed without you actually knowing it? So this can definitely happen. It's one of those things where if uh, it does happen, you want to make sure that your other products are not restricted for the same reasonings. 
whether it's a keyword or anything like that. They can give you a notification for a single product in a variation group uh, and definitely still have that happen. So check all of your keywords, know why you were restricted and verify that none of your other products have that same exact reasoning. Awesome, awesome guys. Uh, let's uh, keep going here. Let's see, next up we have, let's do long. Long, how's it going, sir? Uh, one, I want to add an existing ASIN as a child variation to a parent listing, but this ASIN is in different category. Can you still add it using the flat file? Technically, yes. Uh, yes, you can, Long. Uh, you need to make sure a few things, though. You want to make sure that the products uh, are technically connected in one way, shape, or form. The purpose of this at the end of the day is to make sure that uh, you're not just having random variations on a listing. Amazon will absolutely suppress a list listing for that. So if you do have that, but you also want to make sure they are in the same parent category, that is what's going to matter most here. You cannot add something that is a uh, sports and outdoors product to a home and household parent. So that is not going to work. But if you are in a child category, that is not part of the same or, or is a part of the same parent category. You shouldn't have many issues there. Uh, definitely something to look into at the end of the day, but first and foremost, verify that the products are actually uh, supposed to be there as well. So good question though, Long. Uh, next up, we have Ali. How's it going, sir? Sir, the, the Amazon, uh, no accept the shipping address. What should I do? Please, thank you. Uh, if you are talking about an order from a client or a customer that is on the customer, you need to reach out to them, have them update that. Uh, if you are talking about the shipping address specifically for uh, MCF, again, reach out to the uh, customer, make sure it's the correct one. Uh, if you're talking about shipping from Amazon, uh, that's one of those situations where, again, you need to verify and make sure you have the exact right address. Amazon wants, for instance, a full zip code, not just five digits sometimes. Uh, verify that you have the correct one. Uh, that's the biggest thing at the end of the day. If you still run into the issue, uh, make sure that Amazon has it registered where your actual business address is. Add that into the back end and go from there. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's go to Key. All right, Key. Doing a flat file upload and getting error 99300. Product detail page rules. I've combed through our bullets and product description. I don't see any language that is triggering this error. I'm not familiar with 99300. If you are talking about 99003, which I do know is an error code. Uh, I don't know if 99300 is, but if you're talking about 99003, that error code has to do with variation theme. So go into your flat file, verify that you do have the correct variation theme. Uh, and then from there, you'll be able to fix everything. So uh, not verify what the error code is. 99003 is a variation theme error code. Uh, if it is 99300, what I would suggest is uh, send us an email here, uh, my Amazon guy, and we will take a look at it and figure it out for you. Thanks, Key. Uh, next up. Frost tax. How do you find a Google freight forwarder for shipping food in Amazon US or good freight forwarder? Uh, typically speaking, key, this is going to be one of those areas that I'm not 100% uh, familiar with. I haven't done uh, all that much with freight forwarding. Uh, but if you are looking for a good one, I would suggest uh, one starting with the ones that Amazon always suggests. Amazon is uh, has a great freight forwarding system. Uh, and great recommendation system for it. Past that as well, uh, I would look at reviews online and see where you can find specific ones for your area. That's going to be the biggest thing is finding reputable food uh, distribution freight for your area. Next up, Kevin, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Hope you're doing well from Lakeland. I haven't actually ever been to Lakeland. I don't know uh, what part of Florida that's in. I, I've been all around Florida, but I don't know if I know Lakeland specifically. But good afternoon, nonetheless. Glad you're here. Uh, let's see. Innovation House, same uh, question as Key had. Same thing, same answer. Uh, if Again, if you don't know it, reach out. Podcast at myamazonguy.com. Uh, we are more than happy to look into it for you and get you an answer. 
Uh, next up, we have Rosina. Hi, Noah. Hey, what's up? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Glad you're here. Uh, and we have John Aspinall, the one and only. Why is SFP not the miracle pill for many brands thinking this is their loophole to using FBA? SFP is extremely, and for those who don't know, he's talking about Seller Fulfilled Prime. Uh, Seller Fulfilled Prime is extremely difficult to keep up with. Uh, I know very few sellers who are able to do it. Uh, unless you have warehouses all over the country or are willing to eat some really heavy fees, SFP is going to be very difficult. On top of that, uh, missing single uh, orders, depending on your order volume, can even restrict and take away SFP entirely, if not just deactivate the account. So, uh, you know, John pulling this out here. Yes, absolutely. It's not going to be a uh, magical pill or, you know, a secret bullet for FBA. Uh, it takes a lot of different logistic options for SFP to really work. So if you are looking at going the SFP route, I would highly suggest you take a second look and make sure that it's actually going to make sense uh, and that you have everything set up correctly. But FBA is going to be your better route more than likely at the end of the day. So great thought there, John. All right, Alex, how's it going, sir? Uh, hi, from Germany, I assume there. Uh, we sell a multivitamin product. We often get five orders in five minutes and then three hours, nothing. Is that normal? Sure. Uh, at the end of the day, order volume is going to be entirely just based on what your uh, product looks like. What I would take a look at as well for you, if you're running any advertisements, look at your day parting. See if you have anything set up there and see where your ads, potentially you could be running on a budget in that five minutes. So big thing there uh, at the end of the day. And also your competitors could be day parting as well. So take a look at your ads, uh, look over to see if there's anything you're missing there. But this can happen, especially if you are a newer brand. So don't fret at the end of the day. People order at weird times. Uh, the biggest thing is to try and get consistent order volume and figure out when your peak purchase time is. Uh, all right. We got rough liners on Amazon. Howdy. Hey, how's it going, Brandon? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for popping in, sir. All right. All right. Leia, is it better to enter text directly into text sections in Amazon store for ranking purposes or is adding images with text on them? Okay. So if you asked me this question a couple of months ago, I would tell you absolutely text and I probably still will tell you text. Uh, if there is a section that you can have text, you want it. This is because that text will be crawlable and you can index on that text. You currently cannot index on images and the text that is within them. However, Amazon actually just announced a new feature in which they are going to be having crawlable images here in the near future. They haven't talked much about it. Uh, it's one of those things where I think I'm really interested to see how soon uh, we're going to be actually seeing that come to fruition. But at the end of the day, right now, you always still want to focus on text and your SEO. If there is somewhere to put it in, it will absolutely help you if you have that information. So always want to focus on that indexing and that ranking for keywords. Currently, images do not do that for you. So great question, though, Leah. We got a ton going on today, guys. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a little breather for a second here. I'm going to sip a little bit of my tea, let a few more questions come in here. We got some more to get through. Uh, plenty of time today, guys, but make sure to fill in your questions. Happy to be here today. I will be doing the regular Friday podcast at this time moving forward. I will be bringing in some guests from now every now and then, but uh, excited to be able to spend Friday with you guys and answer all your questions. All right, we got Rosina back. I sell through social campaign connected to attribution link. I also sell separately offer coupon to a group for percentage off. Uh, would a buyer available coupon discount if the buyer buys through my attribution link? So yes, if you have, even if you have an attribution link at the end of the day, uh, if they go through that attribution link, if you have a coupon active on the product, you are still going to have that coupon active. Uh, it will double up even if you have a percentage off. So same thing, if you were to have your product have a strike through price, uh, that strike through price would add on top of that coupon. Uh, or if you had a prime exclusive discount and you were also running another promotion or coupon, all of those 
will stack on top of each other. So if you're looking to only do one, you want to focus on the one that you think is most valuable to you. If you're doing attribution at the end of the day, I think UGC and everything like that is fantastic. Uh, go with what is giving you and driving the most results. Perfect, perfect. Micah, how's it going, sir? Part one, we have two accounts that we are merging into one. Is it easier? Is there an easier way for us to port over all of our parent ASINs from the account we are closing to the account we are keeping? Or do we have to recreate all of the parent listings in the new account from scratch? Uh, no, Micah. Uh, you do not have to recreate all of those listings. So what you're going to want to do is download your catalog listing report. That's going to have all of your current products in it. Uh, and from there, when you download that, you're going to be able to then upload it back onto the new account. The one thing I will say to uh, consider here when you are doing that is making sure that your accounts are set up properly. There are no issues. Amazon does not like it if you are selling the same ASINs on two different accounts. Uh, but as long as you have everything on the back end clear there, you should have no issues. Uh, but yes, you are going to want to download your entire catalog listing report. And then from there, upload that onto the new account. And you'll have all of your parent ASINs, all of your ASIN information, uh, same way you would just a regular flat file. Hope that helps. All righty, guys. Uh, DFM Toolworks. Have you had any sellers have issues with Vine reviews where the reviewer needs to purchase an additional item to use your product? Concern is Vine reviews can't be removed if negative. So not this specific scenario. However, uh, I have worked with sellers, for instance, who have needed a subscription service to fully utilize their product. They'll sell something, let's say, uh, a camera for instance, and that camera, you can use it, but as a backend subscription service, uh, you will have a very difficult time with Vine reviews if you have a secondary product that's needed for it to work. Uh, if you have a subscription service, anything like that, you want to avoid utilizing Vine for that because yes, you will absolutely have some negative reviews that come out of it. Uh, once people realize that either they have to buy another product with it or they have to uh, get a subscription. So suggestion here would be to bundle them together uh, for the time being if you want to really do Vine. And then from there, you can have that bundle on Vine and then upload that to the parent same way and get the reviews that way. You won't have them on the child listings, uh, but you will have them on the overall variation. So hope that helps. Moving right along here, guys. Alex, we recaptured all alt text keywords and the complete description. Since then, we have been selling significantly less. Does it take time and Amazon has to classify it correctly again? Uh, if I am understanding you here correctly, Alex, uh, recaptured all alt text keywords, complete description. Since then, we have been selling significantly less. <laughs> Yeah, you shouldn't be having an issue here, Alex, when it comes to reclassifying. What I would do, check your uh, overall category, verify there aren't any issues there. Uh, if you're talking about having the specific keywords in there, keywords aren't going to actually have any real significant impact uh, bringing you down unless you have the wrong keywords, in which case that's a big problem, right? Uh, but what you want to focus on here most specifically uh, would be seeing where the actual problem lies with your product losing all of those impressions. Uh, if you're recapturing your alt text in your descriptions, so you have all of your keywords in there, uh, you want to make sure that you're actually indexed for them. You can check this on Helium very easily. Uh, so for instance, if you got rid of a lot of your keywords that you were already using uh, and you weren't indexed for them at the time, it's going to be very difficult for Amazon to then attribute those keywords to your product. And that could cause a definite uh, downslide in your sales. So check your indexing on your keywords before you update your alt text, anything like that beforehand uh, and remove keywords. And then from there, uh, make sure you're always uh, only using keywords that are going to be extremely relevant to your product. Hope that helps. All right, uh, Rosina. 
For coupons, is there a maximum discount percentage off limit restrictions, uh, or is it whatever the seller can afford to offer? I think that there is, Rosina. Let me let me check this for you real quick. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think coupons might be maxed out uh, at 50%. Give me one second here. We can just go through. Let's do this. Uh, let's choose a standard coupon, all customers. I don't have any products that aren't currently in coupons. That's an issue. Uh, let me do this real quick. Let me log into another account for you, Rosina. I'll check on that. Uh, but I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you shouldn't have a limit on price more than 50%. Great question, though. I like ones like this where I'm not... Uh, where I'm not a hundred percent positive, but I think I know the answer. Uh, yes. Okay, Rosina. Yeah, it is fifty percent between five and fifty percent. Uh, you can have max of that, so it'll be fifty percent of what your current uh sale price is for the product. Hope that helps. All righty. Uh, going forward. Farwa, could you please advise on whether it's more effective to begin a campaign in the honeymoon period launch phase with automatic or manual targeting or a combination of both? I've heard uh, some experts, uh, the second part, suggest starting with manual campaigns due to Amazon's lack of sales history, potentially leading to waste ad spend with automatic targeting. What's your recommendation on in this scenario? Uh, Farwa, I always recommend doing both. Uh, auto campaigns and manual campaigns uh, need to both exist at the same time. What I would highly suggest is you set up an auto exact campaign, uh, an auto broad campaign, and auto phrase campaign. Uh, the point of this is you want to use those to generate keywords for you that you know are working. Yes, you can have a little bit of waste ad spend, but you can also use this as an opportunity to see what keywords are and aren't working. We call this gold panning. Uh, as well, on top of that, you obviously want to set up some manual uh, campaigns to see exact or utilize your current search terms that you know your competitors are utilizing as well. So I would suggest doing both. Uh, I know a lot of people will say do one or the other. Uh, I'm a big fan of doing both at the end of the day and think it's going to be most useful and most uh, target rich environment when you're first launching a product. Hope that helps. Uh, D-Doc, uh, what freight forward company would you recommend? I don't have a specific recommendation. Uh, what you can do though, uh, if we, we might put a banner up here uh, in a second, but we do have uh, a list on our website, my Amazon guy, uh, of third party recommendations. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. Just here we go. You come to, oh, let me, wrong one. Here we go. If you come to our site here uh, and take a look at our third party recommend services right here, uh, if we have any here, they will be right here. Uh, these are all the services that we uh, directly recommend to any sellers. Uh, I'm not positive that we have a uh, freight forward and company on here at the moment. Uh, but that being said, this is where it would be if you wanted to check that out. Hope that helps. All right. Uh, Harris, I don't get deals on my account anymore. How does Amazon decide when and who to give deals? They help me boost my listing a bit. So just curious, how can I reactivate them again? All right. So this is a very frequent issue that I see people running into uh, with Amazon deals. So Amazon deals, there's a few different kinds, but I think you're probably talking about lightning deals. So one, uh, I don't usually recommend lightning deals. <laughs> They're not great to begin with. Uh, you can do a lot more with just promotions, coupons, brand tailored, anything like that, PEDs, uh, than lightning deals. Uh, right now, for instance, uh, deals in general are restricted for uh, this week due to Amazon's big spring sale. So if you're having issues this week, that would be the specific reason why. Uh, 
however, past that as well, uh, I believe a lot of times Amazon restricts this usually based on seller uh, performance and product performance. So you want to make sure that your account health is in perfect condition. And on top of that, that your feedback is also very, very good. Uh, a lot of times as well, Amazon is taking away things such as lightning deals uh, and restricting them to sellers who are involved in their uh, like launch program and things like that, which I do not recommend you be a part of the launch program. Uh, unless you already are, in which case, uh, reach out, talk to your SAS rep, uh, and they should be able to reactivate those deals for you. So hope that helps, Harris. All right. Uh, we have Jason Strongwater. Uh, is there a hack or workaround to get variations to appear in the sequence or order you want? Unfortunately, no, Jason, uh, there is not. So typically speaking, Amazon is always going to order them uh, alphabetically, uh, and then on top of that by numerical value. So for instance, uh, black will always come before blue. So there are some tips and tricks I have seen people use, uh, such as always putting a one next to whatever your variation name is, uh, or instead of saying blue, say Arctic blue, if you want that to show up before black, you know, so those are, uh, those are kind of the only real uh, tricks to the trade, but Amazon will always go by numeric value and alphabetical order first. Uh, let's see. It looks like we have another from uh, Farwa. Uh, could you please advise on whether it's more effective to begin a campaign in the honeymoon period launch phase with automatic or manual targeting or a combination of both? Uh, oh, okay. So I think this in relation to uh, your... Yes, yeah, same question from earlier. Uh, again, Farwa, Always just uh, go with both at the same time. I think both are going to work best for you. Hope that helps. Uh, Harris again. Does day parting PPC means that I can activate my PPC at specific time, or does it mean I can increase my budget only in that time? If it's activating at specific time, which Amazon guy uh, video should I? Uh, and I believe there's going to be a secondary part of this uh, where you're asking to watch, but. Let me walk you through this real quick, Harris. Uh, I believe this will be uh, pretty simple to kind of show off uh, with a campaign. So I will just choose a random campaign here real quick, and then I'll share my screen just so you can see. Um, all right. So when we are looking specifically at, and I'll hide this, uh, a campaign here uh, on Amazon. You are going to want to go to your actual campaign and you're going to want to go to budget rules uh, and you're going to want to add a budget rule. So this is the day parting uh, part of Amazon uh, for that budget rule. Uh, name it whatever you want. You want it to be schedule based. Uh, this is day parting performance based is going to essentially turn it off if we're too high, too low, anything like that. Um, uh, so from there as well, you want to do a daily usually for that. Uh, and then this is new, the hours of the day. Uh, they just added this to day parting, so we can actually choose uh, that as well uh, for either a run all day or choose start time. Uh, so typically speaking, uh, you know, let's say you have really, really, really good sales during 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Like that's your peak time. So what you want to do, do 8 a.m. end time. 5 p.m. And on Amazon, you can only increase the budget. So what I would advise is you usually set your budget uh, much lower uh, or your bids typically. So do your bids uh, or your budget much lower. And then from there during this time, let's say you want to increase it uh, to 100%. So during these hours, instead of having a $30 daily budget from 8 to 5, uh, you will have a $60 budget during that time period. So this is most effective if you're either doing it the beginning of the day, end of the day uh, on Amazon for using their day parting rules. So it's a little different than a lot of other you know softwares, things like that, where they will have specifically the uh, ability to change budgets uh, or bids, change, uh, you know, decrease, increase, things like that. Uh, it's only increase on Amazon, only for set time periods. Uh, and so you always, and uh, something you can do, you can also do a run all day. If 
you do a run all day there for your day parting, what you can do is you can say, oh, I get all of my sales on Sunday because it's the most active day on Amazon. So I'm going to increase all of my budgets by 100% on Sunday so that we are uh, more effective on that day versus other days. Uh, so hope that helps. This is going to be the easiest way at the end of the day for you to uh, implement day parting on your account. All right. Let's see here. Let's go for, give me a second here, guys. Matthew. Hey, Matthew. If I'm launching keyword uh, launching keyword targeted campaigns in Germany or other countries, should I input the keywords in English or input them as their home language? Always input them as their home language if you have the ability to. Uh, so it, you're going to always do better if you input them in their home language. Uh, what I would recommend, find services that currently offer the ability to do translations. Uh, if you know someone, <laughs> it's even better. But typically, uh, you want to find a reputable service because I have seen some. You don't want to find anyone on Fiverr or anything like that because they'll usually just use something like Google Translate. It's not great usually. Uh, so find a reputable service that does specifically this. Have them translate all of the you know text, everything. Uh, if you can even swing it, try and swing the images to have something on there that's in the other language. But I don't always recommend that. So uh, text, absolutely, just because a lot of times they're going to be uh, typically trying to type in that language, right? So you want to search with the keywords that are most relevant to them and not the English ones. Great question, Matthew. I love that one. Uh, hello, Charles. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what do you suggest when starting wholesale? It is, uh, is it good high criteria like 300 sales per month or sit and sales rank of less than 50 K criteria is going to be entirely up to what you're selling. Uh, to be entirely honest, I've worked with a lot of wholesale. I've worked with a lot of drop ship. Uh, I've worked with a lot of resellers. I know for instance, Steven right now is turning age of sage into a wholesale arbitrage model. Uh, he has his own specific criteria and he's going to go look at everything in person. So, uh, typically speaking, that's, it's depend on product. I have seen it where people think that they can get in and, you know, it's selling 5,000 units a month and there's only one other seller and, you know, they can't even keep in stock X, Y, and Z. So, uh, I don't have a specific recommendation here, Charles, uh, for exact criteria that you should be looking at when doing a wholesale model. What I would suggest to you is just make sure you do your research. Don't choose anything Amazon is currently selling themselves. Uh, don't choose anything that's going to get you restricted in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and make sure to diversify. Hope that helps. Rosina, be an extra active today with all the questions. Love it. Uh, when we use A plus content, standard product description text becomes hidden. So if I use that text space, 2000 characters for SEO, are there any chances uh, where this product description will be visible? No, uh, the answer is no. So A plus takes the place of product description. Should you not use product description? Absolutely, you still should. Uh, you should still fill out the entire product description. Uh, make sure on the back end, it has all of the keywords you want to have in it uh, because that still matters. Uh, why it matters? Because at the end of the day, if someone can't see the A-plus content, something has to show up and something is still going to be scraping. So that's why we have that filled out along with our alt text. Uh, so absolutely still fill out that product description if you have the ability to when you're doing A-plus content. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Anoop Kumar, how we, uh, how we can, how can we run effective sponsored display ad in which banner uh, shows multiple skew below the banner uh, pick and video. All right, so this is a very specific type of sponsored display, right? So this type of sponsored display is not your typical banner. One, uh, it costs a lot more than that, and it's not just a sponsored display. Let me see. Not positive we even have this active on our Age of Sage account. I will check real quick so I can show it to you, but... Uh, let's see. Give me one second here, guys. Mm -hmm. 
it's moments like this. I got to start uh, putting some music on these things. Just get a little jam sesh go while I'm pulling everything up. Uh, all right. Uh, we don't have access to it. So uh, short answer is you have to have access to it and you have to be uh, a high volume seller uh, with brand content. And usually you have to have an Amazon ads rep. Uh, so if you do not currently have an ads rep, try and reach out, try and see if you can get one. Uh, but I have seen where, you know, people spending even a hundred K plus, uh, don't have access. So, um, the biggest thing there is grow the account always, uh, and you'll get access sooner or later, uh, to the ability to create those. Hope that helps. Uh, let's see here. Tandis, what's going on with the background key or backend keyword count? I've got five fields and 500 in each gets accepted, but then it revert. Yep. Okay. So. Amazon initially launched the ability for us to have up to like 2,500 keyword or uh, characters. It was fantastic. They had those five different ones they were talking about. They had the one. They are now turning that back uh, on everyone and saying, hey, we're going back to a 250 uh, byte count. So uh, if you are currently utilizing them, keep utilizing them, but you're going to get reverted back entirely here shortly. Uh, Amazon does this every so often where they bring out some feature they think is going to be really great. Uh, this one specifically was kind of from the past that they brought back. Uh, I think they were just testing it again, see how it would go. Uh, they realized, hey, that's probably not the best idea uh, at the end of the day. And so now they are reverting back and saying sorry with, without actually saying sorry. So uh, best thing here. Just revert back uh, sooner than later. Uh, but if you still have access on some procs, keep it up. Keep that access for a time being. And when it reverts back, it reverts back. Just make sure you have uh, the correct 250 ready for when it reverts back. All righty, guys. Let me get a little bit more tea here right now. Get awfully parched answering all of these. Uh, let's go to, who are we on next? Uh, team help me out here. Keith, Keith, there we go. All right, Keith. Uh, hi, Noah. How's it going? <laughs> Can you recommend any manufacturing, it, uh, an inventory software that integrates with Amazon zero, uh, counting software? Thanks. I don't think I have, again, uh, any specific recommendations, not any ones that, uh, you know, aren't just very easily visible from a quick Google search. Uh, the biggest thing, again, uh, that I'm just going to keep pointing to is always go to myamazonguy.com uh, and go to our recommended third party services. We have plenty here, uh, I believe, if I do a quick little search. Don't have any that are specific for that, uh, but there are plenty of softwares out here. Uh, we have all of our recommendations right here on our site. Uh, I've worked with plenty of other ones, I believe. Uh, right now, I'm not positive Merchant Spring connects with any of those, but that would be the one that first comes to mind for me. Uh, Seller Board, I believe, does connect with Zero uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, and then past that, I'm just looking through real quick, see if any of these pop out to me. Uh, Zangru doesn't, from my knowledge yeah i'm not seeing any of these off the top of my head um there's plenty of them out there uh at the end of the day keith i mean you can look at a channel advisor you can look at uh you know even things such as uh the what is it uh completely off the top of my head right now but i'm just thinking of like accounting softwares i mean uh you can look at any form of accounting software out there and that will probably uh, be there as well. So, um, quick Google search will do the same thing. Recommended three party services, Keith, uh, going to be your best way to go. All right. Actually going to pop my camera down a little bit here. There we go, guys. Get to see me a little bit better. What recent innovations has Amazon introduced to enhance its customer experience and operational efficiency? not really sure what you would consider uh, to be enhancement in its customer experience at the end of the day. Uh, it's constantly releasing new services, uh, new features. One of the ones that I really like that they just released, I'll pull up uh, real quick here if I can. Let's see. 
They just recently released a new feature for store insights. Looks like it's not pulling up right now. Amazon ads is down. I've noticed that a lot recently where it just randomly goes down, but new feature for store insights. Uh, another new feature that they actually just launched as well uh, is under their, uh, let's see, I believe it is under their product opportunity export or no uh, marketplace guidance. They just re uh, released a new one for specifically returns and viewing that through your uh, SQP. So that would be uh, another one that I would look at. Uh, I'm not seeing anything else super new here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, nothing nothing super new. Uh, Kahel, at the end of the day, uh, check under your store insights. Uh, you can check. I believe we just released a video uh, actually on that as well that I recorded the other day. Uh, on the new store insights dashboard uh, under engagement uh, shows essentially all of the engagement on your products uh, and store insights. Uh, they also release the ability to look under your SQP and see what the primary return reasons are uh, for products in your category. So you can try and go around that. So operational efficiency there, but nothing on customer experience side that I know of. Let's see. Ali, hi, thanks for this priceless session. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't know if I would consider it priceless. Uh, is it possible to delete images for existing listings via Excel file? Yes, uh, you can just do a flat file upload. Um, if you do a partial upload when you do that, it will not do that. However, if you do a full upload when you are doing a flat file upload, it will take any current cells that are not filled in and consider them to be null. So I would do that uh, if you're looking to get rid of any images or anything like that, do a full upload, make sure that the image section is completely clear uh, and that should clear everything out. If it do doesn't, uh, then I might suggest, uh, I mean, it's not too hard to take images out on Amazon's backend, but uh, also make sure you're doing the correct form of upload and update on the actual products as well. So hope that helps. Jeffrey, how's it going, sir? On some of my listings, Amazon has placed the brand story below the A plus content. Is there a way to move it back up above the A plus content? I haven't seen that before, actually, Jeff. Um, I've never. I, let me take a look here. I, do you have a ASIN or anything you can send our way? Because I haven't seen uh, before where they're putting the brand story down below. Uh, there are times where I suppose that could happen whatnot but for the most part brand story should always be above the a plus content i would almost wonder if uh you're uploading the brand story as a form of a plus content uh, but if you have an asin i'm a, i'd be happy to review it here uh and look at it uh and on that note as well uh if you have any asins that you want us to review live on our q a feel free to throw them in uh, and we will do a review session here talk about everything that can be improved on the ASIN, as well as any issues that you're currently facing on. More than happy to do that on these Friday live Q and A's. Uh, let's see, Pete. Have you had experience with Amazon constantly changing your category? The new category always says, I assume that just means blank <laughs> and does seem uh, and does seem to have changed when I check. I'm worried this is affecting my BSR. Yes, Amazon will change your category, Pete. So the primary reasoning behind Amazon changing your category uh, will mean that essentially Amazon thinks your category should be somewhere else. Why does it think that? Because people are purchasing based on certain keywords in a certain other category. So if they're coming, let's say from, uh, if you're trying to sell a soccer ball and uh, people consistently are buying it uh, under footballs, it may change your category to be footballs. Uh, that does not mean that your product is a football, but it just means that people are finding that category to be more relevant for your product. If it has, if it is having a negative effect on your ranking and your BSR, uh, you can uh, combat this by making sure you have the correct category at all times. So uh, verify, uh, and one thing you can always do is verify via your SQP. What are other products that people are purchasing with your product? Are people purchasing a lot of footballs with your soccer ball? And that is why uh, you are getting ranked under that football category. Uh, 
that's where I would start at the end of the day, but you can always change your category. And uh, I would suggest opening a case as well to get your category uh, placement permanent. So hope that helps, Pete. Moving forward, Stephen, we have listings removed for bamboo fiber classification. They don't contain bamboo fibers, and we have tried to prove that to account health. They said delete and relist. We did so and is still not uh, working. What do you suggest? Yeah, so we've actually ran into this a few times uh, with a couple of our recent uh, clients and whatnot with their products that uh, some do have bamboo and some don't. Uh, it's a big pain in the butt. Steven, so essentially you need to, yes, go through, do a delete relist. Secondly, uh, if your product does not have bamboo, make sure that you have the exact percentages. If it is 100% polyester, 100% nylon, whatever it is, right? Make sure you have the exact percentages very, very visible in your description, uh, in your bullets, and in your title. So do a delete relist. Make sure you have all of whatever fibers you are using in your product uh, in there and then uh, do all of that and then contact seller support again. Uh, what I would suggest is get on the phone with seller support first and foremost to solve the issue. Hope that helps. And let us know if there's anything else there. Uh, you know, you can always reach out again to podcast at myamazonguy.com uh, for any updates as well. Harris back again. Such a great thing by Amazon guy for coming live every Friday and replying to all Amazon so or helping them without charging money. <laughs> it is it is uh, our pleasure at the end of the day. Uh, my Amazon guy is an education company first and foremost. We are here to help educate everyone because it is not us against Amazon or is not us against us it is us against Amazon first and foremost. So we are here to help educate the average seller and anything that you do not think you can do or able to do. Uh, we're always here as an agency full service to help as well. So uh, feel free to check us out, myamazonguy.com uh, for anything you need. All right, uh, Nico. Hey Noah, do you have a recommendation for a good sourcing agent for products in China and or USA? We don't do anything with sourcing. Um, that's the honest truth. We is not our forte here. We are not, uh, in the business of sourcing whatsoever, Nico. Uh, so I don't have a huge recommendation for you. Uh, what I do have is some simple advice, uh, when it comes to sourcing. And that is, uh, make sure you fully, fully, fully vet whoever it is that you are getting your product from. Uh, there are plenty of, uh, manufacturers out there that will try and rip off, especially new sellers. Uh, make sure you vet, make sure you get samples of the product. Uh, make sure you go through the entire process uh, with them. So uh, take any recommendations as well that you can of good manufacturing plants. Uh, but here at My Amazon Guy, we don't typically help people with sourcing. So there you go. Uh, Pete back again. Is there any advice for getting hijackers off my listing? They keep jumping on and off every day at the same time. I'm brand registered, but waiting for the approval from USPTO. Yep. So... So here's first thing you want to verify and be able to check what the seller name is and report that to brand registry. Every time we have run into this issue before where, for instance, uh, there was a single seller of a product, uh, of one of our clients and they would hop on every single day between two and 5. AM when they knew we were not working and were not there to check the listings and see them selling. Uh, this was a big, big, big pain. Uh, but we finally, the issue that you're going to face here is that they are going to want to uh, essentially try and say that the product uh, is still yours, right? And they're just a reseller, not a hijacker. You need to actually purchase a product from one of these sellers when they are on the listing to verify with Amazon brand registry that the product is in fact not yours. Uh, from that point, you can show them the pictures in the submission and have the actual order log uh, to do that. So that's what ended up helping us and get them off, uh, fully. It's going to be a big problem. Something you can also do at the end of the day. Uh, if it's FBM, uh, typically you're still going to have issues with, uh, things like them claiming reseller, uh, but brand registry will be your best friend here. So, uh, you need to purchase the product, get a picture of it, have the order ID, go to brand registry, report the seller, not the ASIN, uh, and they will take care of that for you. Hope that helps Pete. Uh, 
Oh, I've tried the typical stuff or you may know it, just press the listing, have not steal sales. I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Pete, it is uh it's frustrating. It took us it took us months, I want to say, uh, of trying to one track them that down and two get uh an order from them that we could uh send over brand registry. So uh one, always keep pushing brand registry on it. Make sure brand registry knows this is a problem of hijackers, not resellers. Uh, and make sure that uh, you are consistently pushing on the case for it. Uh, it is Amazon's job to protect you uh, and brand registry's job to protect your trademark at the end of the day. Uh, Harris, if I make a new listing and connect it with an existing listing and get all of its reviews, but later separate the new listing when it's on transfer all of my reviews to a new listing. Uh, no. So Harris, uh, reviews are tied to ASIN. So if you are, uh, doing by connecting, I think you're trying to say, uh, you're trying to put like a parent variation together and merge like variation listings. Uh, if that's the case, then when you unmerge those, then no, uh, those reviews will stay separate to the ASINs. Uh, if you're talking about merging two ASINs, so you only have one ASIN, uh, and you get rid of the other ASIN entirely, uh, then you can never get the ASIN back. Uh, well, you can, but it's, it's a very, very, very difficult process that I do not recommend, and it's not uh, going to really be feasible, especially because it comes with a ton of issues with that ASIN in particular and restrictions uh, down the line. So uh, that being said, uh, once you merge two ASINs together, you have one ASIN, that is your ASIN from now on, uh, all of those reviews ratings, rankings, everything uh, will be stuck to that ASIN. Uh, if you have two child under a parent, merge them together into just the parent listing. Yes, you're going to keep all of those reviews and everything. Hope that helps. Nico, there is a sourcing agent, Source Squad, on Mag's third party page, but I can't get in touch with them. I think they're out of business. Uh, that's a good call out there. Uh, Nico, let me take a look here real quick. Uh, I'm not seeing Source Squad on here, uh, Nico. Uh, do you know by chance where it was? Because uh, Source Squad, maybe let's do Squad. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing Source Squad on here. Uh, but good call out, nonetheless. I will uh, make sure you are going to the correct third party page. Uh, if there is a wrong third party page that you are going to. Uh, you know, please shout that out so that we can always get that fixed. Always appreciate that kind of stuff there, Nico. But yeah, not seeing them here. Um, all right. Uh, or by, do you have any tips for finding good brands that approve new sellers? So I'm going to assume you mean reselling, uh, wholesale, for instance. Um, if that's your case, uh, not really. No, uh, the best thing to do is build relationships. <laughs> it sounds weird, but the easiest way to be able to get new, uh, brands and the bigger brands, especially is one build relationships. Uh, two, you can always reach out, cold call, ask them, uh, and three have a very, very high selling account. So the more sales, the more set up your account is to, uh, handle a large brand, let's say, like if you want to sell Nike, Nike is not going to let just any random person sell their products on Amazon. They want to see a history of sales volume. They want to see that this person is not some you know scummy person who's going to be putting prices at $4 million uh, for a pair of Jordans, right? So uh, the biggest thing, grow your sales volume over time. Uh, look at where you can and you know what brands you currently can work with and just do reach outs. It's going to be the easiest thing. Uh, guiding light. Do you have any tips for finding good brands that approve? <laughs> okay. Same, same question, same question, same answer. Uh, Eris, I live in Canada and have an LLC in Texas. Just curious if I can file my own trademark. I was able to do it in the UK myself. Uh, so just wanted to know if I can do that myself. Yeah. Harris, I mean, you can file your own trademark. Absolutely. That's not an issue whatsoever. Uh, if you don't want to file it or you run into any issues, uh, we have trademark services here at my Amazon guy. Uh, feel free to, I believe the actual URL is my Amazon guy.com slash trademark, but let me verify that real quick. Yeah, here it is. 
Uh, so our uh, website here, uh, myamazonguy.com slash trademark services. Uh, we have trademark services. Just fill out our assessment form uh, if you want us to handle it, Harris. But uh, absolutely, if you are looking to do a trademark in the U.S. yourself, even though you live in Canada, yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. David Fulmer. I created a parent-child listing with flat files, and Amazon assigned multiple children to the same ASIN. Uh, how can I permanently delete these because the ASINs are mixing different products? Uh, that sounds like what you actually end up doing is a merge, uh, <laughs> like we were talking about earlier. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to, one, do a delete relist. Uh, if you have the ASIN list from before, you need to do another flat file upload for those products with the correct ASIN. So... Uh, you need to delete them entirely, wait 24 hours, do another flat file upload with the correct ASIN, make sure they are not part of the parent. Uh, and from there, it should update uh, to have their ASINs back. Uh, so that's why I would start with first and foremost. Uh, when you are doing a parent uh, child flat file upload, uh, just make sure that you have all of the correct information in there. Sometimes if you put the same ASIN, uh, it will try and merge everything like you say. So uh, parent will always have just one ASIN. Children should always have separate ones. So uh, hope that helps. Have any issues, let us know. Uh, Victor, hi, can you show how to create an Amazon drone account? <clears throat> I can't. <laughs> Not right now at the very least, Victor. Uh, creating an Amazon drone account is one, uh, difficult and two, time consuming. Uh, it's not something you can just do right now. But that being said, if you... Uh, reach out to us, uh, either one on our coaching page or two podcasts, my Amazon Uh, we can, you know, shoot a video or just walk you through the exact steps for it. We have several drone accounts, uh, here, my Amazon guy, uh, happy to walk you through that entire process. Uh, Vivian, uh, oh, just, uh, responding to Harris. Uh, yep. Lawyers can do it. I think. Uh, we might even be a little bit cheaper than that. Not positive, but yeah, lawyers can do it if you need to. Uh, Pete, isn't it true that Amazon won't do anything to protect your trademark when it's still pending for approval? When I go to report violation, it says I cannot report counterfeit for this trademark. Yeah. Um, yes and no, Pete. Uh, if you are pending approval, uh, Amazon, yes, will have difficulty with, uh, the actual, uh, enforcement of it. Uh, that's when typically speaking, you still need to have any USPTO paperwork, uh, where it says pending approval, uh, on there and let Amazon know about that. But, uh, if that is your case currently right now, again, I would still start building a case. Uh, you shouldn't be waiting more than, you know, six months, let's say for a new trademark, typically speaking, uh, or it, for it to be either approved or denied, I should say. Uh, so again, what I would suggest there, uh, would be to go through the entire process that I was talking about, uh, still be building that case against these hijackers uh, during that time period, take down the ASIN like you were. Uh, it's not a problem at the end of the day, but just make sure that you are the primary contributor of the ASIN still. Uh, and then from there, once you do have that brand registry, uh, you have all the power in your court. Uh, you have all of the history of everything, uh, being able to show it as well. So hope that helps, but uh, Amazon still should stop uh, counterfeit. Um, okay, I checked uh, about a week ago. I guess they got removed since then. Makes sense. Well, <laughs> if they're no longer uh, in business, yeah, that would probably make sense uh, as to why they would be uh, removed from the page. So good shout out nonetheless, Nico. Uh, Victor, great. Yep, happy to help there. Uh, Tushar, how to identify, uh, reviews of each ASIN in the parent without breaking parent, uh, ASIN. Are you asking specifically Tushar how to see which reviews are for which product? Uh, what I would do there one, uh, just go to the back end, uh, go to your, cu uh, customer review section, uh, on Amazon. So, uh, let's see, let's go to review manager. I'll pull this up real quick. Uh, here's a great example. Um, I'll be right here. So uh, let me share. Here we go. 
So uh, go to your review manager under your brands here, Tushar. Uh, just go to customer reviews. You can see the specific review uh, on child ASIN basis. Uh, so it will show, yes, the parent, but it will also show the child uh, for every single review. So you can see both of these are reviews on this one parent, uh, but they are both on this child as well. So just go to your customer reviews, check it out there, and that should answer your question. Uh, Urba, okay, how, uh, how can we build relations with them, even if they're not interested in talking to us? Can you please tell me why I should start talking about with them? What key points do I always remember while talking to brands and distributors? You want to remember how much are you selling right now? Okay. That is the number one thing. It, this is a sales pitch when you're trying to get a brand or any type of wholesaler, anything like that they don't have to work with you. <laughs> the ones you want to work with don't have to work with you. Uh, they have, you know, plenty of things. So it's a sales pitch. Why are they going to work with you? Because uh, you have X amount of sales on Amazon. Uh, you have X reviews. Uh, you are a reputable seller, uh, X, Y, and Z, right? So uh, it is a sales pitch at the end of the day. Uh, a lot of high profile brands aren't going to talk to you, aren't going to work with you. Uh, best thing you can do also go to, if you have like around you, one of the things I know that, uh, Steven is doing, for instance, for his, uh, wholesale arbitrage, is he's having someone go boots on the ground to, uh, you know, auction events for entire pallets and everything of specific product, uh, and going to those places, picking up the product himself, uh, and verifying it. You know, that's one of those things where there you go. That's your entire model. Um, Reaching out to brands, it's just sales process. Gotta get better at sales. David Fulmer, again, thanks for your reply. The ASINs were created when uh, the flat file submitted. So Amazon created and assigned multiple SKUs, same ASIN. So like three or four different SKUs were assigned to the same ASIN. Yeah, so David, what I would suggest here again, same thing. Delete all the products uh, out of them and you're going to do a relist. Uh, what I would suggest if you want to be extra careful, uh, Relist them all, uh, but one at a time. Uh, do flat file uploads for all of them uh, and do brand new uh, ASINs for all of them. Leave the ASIN field blank. It will create a new ASIN for you. Uh, if you know you want to try and do only one of them at a time, you need to separate them out and make sure it's known that they're variations. Uh, it sounds like what could have happened here is you put down the same exact variation for each one. Uh, but typically when you have all of this, uh, it means they're merged into one uh, area. So, uh, I would also just do same thing. Look on the back end, just verify real quick that you're not just looking at the parent. Um, cause sometimes I can, you know, people do look at just the parent, uh, and not, you know, the child ASINs and they think everything has the same ASIN. So verify it is children don't actually have it uh, and go from there. Uh, okay. We got big one, uh, Tushar. Why is, uh, why is hard to make simple changes in the listings these days? Dealing with support for weeks to make simple changes sucks. <laughs> Amazon sucks. Uh, it is us versus Amazon. Amazon is not for the seller. They are for the consumer. Uh, it is why uh, at the end of the day, uh, Stephen built my Amazon guy uh, on the principle uh, of being the most seller centric uh, company there is. So, uh, the biggest thing at the end of the day, uh, just keep pushing. Flat file is always going to be your best friend. Uh, do partials uh, and then do full update flat files. Uh, if you really are still running into issues, uh, those are always going to be your best friend for changes on Amazon. But yeah, seller support sucks. Uh, Tanya, is it advisable to use Amazon outlet deals? I'm concerned about uh, MS Bing, Bing price tracking, possibly damaging purchase activity. Customers are waiting for products to hit the outlet uh, deal level. Uh, let's see. And then you say I have one ASIN non-consumable. Uh, yeah. So typically speaking, Tanya, we recommend outlet deals as kind of like a, I would say almost like last, you know, last ditch effort. Uh, outlet deals are really good for a product uh, that you are never going to have back in stock. You're not planning on selling it again. It's not great. Uh, push only those kind of products. If you're talking about just like having your product on outlet deals just regularly, not great. I would not do that. Um, there are many, many other type of promotion options. You can look at uh, actual deals, promotions, coupons, uh, PDs, 
uh, you know, running more advertisements, right? There's a million ways, right, to have uh, your product be on promotion without it being on outlet deal. Uh, outlet deal is really only good for products that are on outlet. They're never coming back, right? Uh, so hope that helps, but that's the only ones that I would probably push there. Uh, I've just created my seller central uh, on Amazon. Any guiding tips you want to give me as a new seller? <laughs> welcome <laughs> to, uh, you know, welcome. Amazon is going to frustrate you to no end. Uh, deal with it. It's something that we all do. Uh, if you need any help, any advice, look at our myamazonguy.com YouTube channel. Uh, the biggest thing that I would say to any new seller uh, is to always, always, always do all of your research. Uh, watch mag videos on YouTube. Figure out uh, exactly what it is uh, that you're going to be selling. If you know you already know that, fantastic. Uh, go through the entire process. Take it slow. Don't try and rush anything. Uh, make sure all of your information for your business, everything that you are connecting to Amazon uh, is 100% up to snuff. Uh, I've seen many people create you know, their LLC, everything completely wrong. Uh, and then they're like, why am I deactivated? I'm a brand new seller. And so, well, because your bank account is for a completely different person than you. <laughs> so biggest thing at the end of the day, uh, make sure all of your information is correct. Have patience. Amazon is not uh, a fast man's game uh, at the end of the day, uh, if you're new to it at the very least. Uh, and then from there, um, have fun. <laughs> Reach out to Mag if you have any issues. We have uh, all the information over here when it comes to helping Amazon sellers. Uh, Tushar, uh, I don't have customer reviews feature. Tushar, if you don't have customer reviews feature, that means you're not selling a branded product. Um, so that's going to be under brands, or at least you're not having that brand attributed to your product. So make sure that your brand is correctly connected to your product, uh, first and foremost, because that's going to be the biggest uh, aspect there. Uh, secondly, uh, from that as well, um, you want to reach out to seller support. Just make sure that you have everything uh, active that you're supposed to. If you're on like a secondary user account, Verify with the admin user that you have everything set up correctly. Uh, all right, guys, we are only going to answer a couple more and then we're going to hop out here. Uh, so if you have any more, hop, pop them in. But let's go back to Tandis. You outline the steps to take if keywords aren't indexing. All right. <laughs> this is both difficult, uh, but not at the same time. So Tandis, what you're going to want to do uh, is you're going to want to have a Helium 10 account. Uh, from there, uh, with the Helium 10 account, you're going to want to set up uh, your all of the ASINs that you're wanting to index, track index on them. Uh, track all of your indexing, see what you are currently indexing for. Uh, would anything that you are trying keyword-wise, if you have competitor analysis, they have certain keywords, anything like that, uh, you are going to want to add those keywords, the new ones, to your listing, your bullet points, your title, your description, your alt text, uh, wherever you can. You're also going to want to set up ad campaigns for any of your primary keywords that you're targeting and trying to index towards. What this is going to do is make it so when someone clicks that ad, when they're searching for that keyword and they go to your product and they purchase it, boom, you are now indexing for that keyword. So uh, the process seems fairly simple. It's not. You need to have a few things. You need to have uh, search volume. You need to have helium. You need to be able to track your indexing that you currently have uh, and need to make sure to update your indexing regularly. So uh, start there. Uh, if you have more questions, come back next week. Uh, all right, guys, uh, just a few more questions and we will be hopping off here uh, to Char. Let's see how to create triple variations. Uh, thanks. Uh, it is it my imagination or does Amazon suppress orders coming through? Seems like sometimes I get the exact same number of orders uh, across multiple days. Not to my knowledge, um, Tanya, not to my knowledge. Uh, typically speaking, when uh, you know, you're know you seeing that type of thing come through, I would also verify, make sure you are on a professional selling account, not personal selling account. Um, you can have that happen on a uh, personal selling account. But uh, that being said, 
typically uh, look at your advertising, make sure, but also, you know, check to see uh, when, you know, people are most active within your ads, right? So you can check daily, uh, check all of your metrics to see, is there a certain time of day that people are most likely? Uh, if it's, you know, across multiple days, uh, you know, check to see if you're in like a B2B section, for instance, we have plenty of clients who sell uh, like B2B products, right? And Friday, <laughs> Friday between, you know, noon. So essentially now to end of day is like peak time for orders for like some B2B clients, because guess what? It's companies who are figuring out, hey, what do we need for next week? Uh, and doing their end of the week ordering. So uh, that can sometimes happen, uh, typically speaking, but you know, check those areas first and foremost and go from there. Uh, too sharp. Triple variations. I want to touch on this real quick. Uh, triple variations, same exact thing as regular variations. One, I don't recommend them at all. Uh, the reason I don't recommend them is because you're going to end up getting way too crowded, way too... Uh, way too many different options essentially uh it doesn't look good in my opinion and it's not great for conversion uh because you're going to end up with essentially you know maybe one product if you have you know there's no real reason to have a triple variation is more so why i should say unless you have like a very very niche product uh that being said it has to be open to you um it's not open to everyone not every single product not every single person uh if it is open to you you know it so uh <laughs> thanks nico i appreciate that thank you sir uh all right a couple more here guys jan what is your advice on product photography and do you recommend 3d rendering absolutely 3d rendering is awesome uh you know it's one of those for your product photography i always suggest a couple of still shots a couple of lifestyle images uh, and then, you know, when it comes to 3D rendering, I think those are great in certain situations. Don't do it for everything. People still like to see, for instance, uh, a lifestyle image. A lifestyle image is still something you want to push uh, out at the end of the day. I wouldn't do a 3D render lifestyle uh, just because, well, I guess it depends on the product. If you have like a, I don't know, a light strip or something, yes. Uh, but if you have, for instance, like a koozie for a drink. Uh, you absolutely want a realistic photo of a lifestyle image. So uh, 3D renders, great uh, product photography. You know, do still shots, do white backgrounds, do lifestyles. Hope that helps. Oh, and do all angles. It, not so many people focus one angle of their product. Uh, if you have product that has like different sides, things like that, really helps do every single angle. Um, all right. Blaine, hello, Noah, from Cabo San Lucos, Mexico. Well, hello. <laughs> Two-year member and MAG full-service client. Just wanted to congrats you on your first solo flight and wishing you the very best. Oh, thank you, Blaine. I appreciate that very much. I, uh, Yeah, I, it's, not my, it's not my official first solo. I did one about a month and a half ago, but this is now uh, my official, hey, Noah is the guy for Fridays. So uh, happy to be here, happy to help everyone out and everything. It's going to be uh, great moving forward. So thanks, Blaine. Appreciate that. Uh, let's go. How often do you review your keywords list? Uh, weekly. Uh, review your keywords list, your keywords list weekly. Uh, it should update like indexing pretty regularly. Uh, you know, if you want to review it more often, you can, but that's really also depending on sales volume. If I have something that is selling, you know, 10,000 units a day, yeah, I would review that like daily. But if you have something that's selling, uh, you know, couple hundred products to you know only even like 50 products a week review it weekly see where you're at um tanya i've done seo optimization listing images etc with mag what should i focus on next advertising <laughs> advertising is where you should focus on next uh if you're interested in doing any advertising with uh my, with mag feel free to reach out to us uh you know uh, more than happy to also guide you on that entire process. But yeah, we do, uh, we do full ad advertising. Uh, we also will do ad optimization. Uh, so, uh, feel free to reach out to us for that, but, um, absolutely advertising is where you need to go next. If you've already fully optimized your listing, uh, Tanya, uh, all right. Uh, when do you do the Q and A's each week? Uh, 
we do Q and A's every Friday. Uh, I will be here every single Friday moving forward at 12 Eastern to do a live Q and A. Uh, my name is Noah Wickham. I'm brand director here at my Amazon guy. Feel free to ask any questions on Fridays and throughout the week, and we will be sure to answer them during this live Q and A session. Uh, and then <laughs> unfortunately I do not speak Spanish. I am taking Spanish lessons, Carlos. Uh, but I am not uh, what I would consider to be fluent uh, in the slightest as of yet. So uh, it is something I'm actually taking. Uh, I do have several uh, people here at MAG that uh, are fluent Spanish speakers. I will definitely get some of them uh, on one of these live Q&As on Fridays, uh, moving forward, and uh, try and have someone else who can answer some uh, Spanish questions. So, uh ch -ch -ch. Tanya, can I trust Amazon's ad experts? Yes and no. Uh, Amazon wants you to spend as much money as possible on Amazon. Uh, that being said, are all of their ideas bad that they give you in recommendations? No. But their goal at the end of the day is to try and get you to spend as much money as possible on Amazon. So whether or not I would take everything they say, no, absolutely not. Uh, Amazon has a biased opinion on what they are trying to push for you. And their people do as well, whether they know it or not. So uh, yes and no. Great recommendations, but not everything you need. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. I, uh, I've been seeing you, uh, all over LinkedIn. I love watching your, uh, your, uh, daily posts and everything on building an agency. So we should, uh, definitely connect sometime, but, uh, great to see you here as well. Um, all right, guys. Uh, that's going to be it for our Friday live Q&A. Uh, I am happy to be here every single Friday at 12 Eastern. Uh, we are uh, my Amazon guy. We are a full service Amazon agency. Uh, we do everything in-house. Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Here we go. So that was our Friday live Q&A. Uh, we are here, going to be here every single Friday at 12 Eastern. Uh, we are my Amazon guy. We are a full service agency. Uh, we do everything from listing optimization to advertising uh, on Amazon. Uh, at the end of the day is us versus Amazon. Uh, we also have plenty of coaching that we do. If you're interested ever in booking a coaching call, whether it's with myself, Kristen, Steven, uh, we are all available at any time. So feel free to do that. Uh, on top of that, we also have jobs. Uh, They're available. So feel free to go apply. Uh, we have positions that are open for uh, everything in the US international. So brand director, managers, brand interns uh, is paid internship. So feel free to check that out as well. Uh, and from there, hope you all have a fantastic Friday and a fantastic weekend. I will see you all next week.